Hello everyone. This is the day two of the 30 days of identity fundamentals. Here we can do a quick recap of the foundation of cybersecurity. In the first video, we did discuss about what are the different branches in the overall cybersecurity. You have the network security, endpoint security, application security, cloud security, data security, identity and access management falls under one of them, security operation, compliance and governance. So this whole plus there could be additional layers to this also because the way the whole world is evolving now. So there could be additional domain which I would have missed. But high level these are the overall eight domains that comprises of the overall cybersecurity. Now let's move on further in today's session to know more about identity and access management. So where is I am sitting in, in all of this, right? So the first is I am sits at the center of cybersecurity because initially cloud was the perimeter and cloud is where everyone was focused on. But now identity is the new perimeter because in an organization, as I was discussing in the previous, this could be the firewall, right? But now with the distributed systems and people logging in from across the world, right from using in different types of system these are different types of users with using different types of systems you have to protect these areas individual these have now become individual systems so now previously everything was inside you had vpns you had firewall and then you had the work from office culture so everyone was working from inside you were able to protect them using a vpn and everyone was seamlessly working in. So your only protection was this. Now that everyone has moved outward, all the users are outside. Now we need to think, how do we ensure and protect this new perimeter? Because firewalls would protect your network. But if a hacker gets the valid credentials, they would just walk in straight. IAM bridges users, devices, and applications with asking few of the basic questions like authentication, who you say you are. Authorization, what can you do with the access? And governance, should you keep this access or not? So these are the three ways in which IAM is trying to bridge gaps between a user and the device that they are trying to use and what application they are trying to log into with their level of access. So eventually, this ensures that the sole goal of IAM is to ensure the right person has the rights with logs into the right system with the right level of access for the right time and for the right reasons. This is like I am in a nutshell. We'll repeat it right person, right system. Let's say you log into any application, you should be the right person and you should have the right level of access. If you want administrative access, you should be given administrative access. If you are a normal user, you should be given normal user. Not everyone should be given blanket user access. Not everyone should be given blanket admin access. And also for the right time, if it's a Jira access or a Confluence access that you need to run a certain project, you should be given it for that particular duration only. And why? Because you belong to that team. If you have been given an access of an application which is a finance application there should be a right reason that you belong to the finance team hence you have been given the access you belong to the development team hence you have been given a certain level of access so let's move on again summarizing this i am ensures that you involve the right person which would utilize the right system and you will help gain the right access at the right time for the right reason. And this goes on, the cycle would go on. Anything breaks in between, let's say you give, give access to a wrong person, the outcome is a breach. If they are not utilizing it for the right, you're, they are not utilizing the access to the right system. Again, there is a security breach. 
because they could do anything with that access. They got the wrong access. A user may would have got admin level access. Again, breach. They may have been given the access for a long period of time. Something could be wrong. It would go unnoticed. Again, it would lead to a security incident. And if, imagine, and this is a, I mean, I can give you a really good example. Imagine I work for an IT team and I don't have any reason to have access to the database of Workday. And somehow I've been given that access. That is definitely not the right reason for me to have the Workday or a payroll system or a kind of a timesheet system access anyways, right? So that was not the right reason, but I got it somehow. Definitely there will be reasons I will be able to make changes. It may not be a breach, but that is, that will definitely hamper confidentiality integrity of the system. And again, you never know if someone acting as a user would gain access to these type of systems. Eventually that will lead to breach. Hence, for all of this reason, we should know why the perimeter has shifted and how IAM is trying to protect perimeter at each and every level. So here is the IAM access control funnel. You have all the users here based on the right level of access. The permission is checked. And in that only the right people will be given access. If you see, there's a filtered process, maybe hackers or everyone would try, but then only few will be able to authenticate. But in that also, right? Only few will be able to have access to an application. Let's say in an organization, everyone may try to log into a system, let's say username and password, but only few will get access because for other, it'll be either you do not belong to that domain, invalid username and password or something like that. But for few, it'll be success. And in that also, once you complete the authentication process, very few will have authorization. And this is when you say that you have been granted access to the application. So another components of IAM also is logs. It would log and do the auditing function primarily for compliance and incident response. Without IAM breaches, as we discussed via, via stolen credentials, insider threats, example, most modern breaches like Uber, Colonial Pipeline, uh, involved compromised identities primarily. There was no other reason, right? So some of the key components of IAM includes IGA, who gets what access, where you have, uh, and the user lifecycle management, the entire join and move a lever process, that's where you have tools like sale point, save and symmetry, observe ID, one entity manager, many in, in no particular order. Pam, you have products like CyberArk, Beyond Trust, everyone trying to secure the administrative accounts because they are the privilege accounts. Okay. Then you have the access management. How do users log into the system? How do they authenticate? How is the authorization happening? What factors to use for MFA? What is the combination of username and password? What should be the password strength? Everything will be taken care by this particular domain. So this again gives a clear picture of IGA primarily managing user access and permissions. It determines what level of access you have, right? When you actually log in, who's giving you the permission? who's reviewing that permission, on what is the basis those permissions are reviewed, everything around that. Pam, the moment an account is given the highest privilege, all the storing, vaulting, credential rotation, password rotation, monitoring, everything uh, of protecting a privilege account comes under Pam. And then when you decide to log into the system, you try to access an application. Which application will perform single sign-on? How to federate? How to make two applications talk to each other? Who will be the user logging in? What factors they'll be putting in? Everything, username, password, what MFA they would use, everything would come under access management. So to summarize, IAM exists because firewalls can't protect stolen passwords. And IAM is the bridge between people, process, and technology. Here is a quick IAM security framework. 
you have the core of access management primarily trying to protect the users and their roles eventually from a process you are trying to access using protocols and workflows and then there are systems and tools that are used to manage the technology so this summarizes the overview of iam what are the different domains in iam what are their core functionalities and in the next video we'll be talking more about the cia tried and triple a the principle iam is built on